Okay, continuing with improper integrals. Um, it says determine whether this integral is convergent or divergent. So let's take a look at the graph of it to see if there's any hope for this to be convergent, because if it's not and if it looks like the area becomes infinite, I might as well not even try doing the integral. Okay, so let's look at the graph. We're looking at the graph from 2 to infinity. So somewhere here, and it looks like it is really approaching the x-axis um, fairly quickly. Let's zoom in. And it looks like it's definitely from 2 on a decreasing function going to the right. So there is hope that this could be convergent, but we don't know. Let's go actually do the integral. So we'll go and replace this uh, guy that I call trouble point, which is really not a trouble point, but infinity it makes it improper. We're going to replace it with t and look at limits. Don't forget to put the limit as t goes to infinity. That too looks like it's a power function, and it'll be a, a quick u sub if we even want to show the u sub. Maybe we shouldn't even really show the u sub, because if this is my u, then my du is automatically dx. So I can just go ahead and apply, um, add 1 to the exponent and divide by it. So don't forget the limit part as well. x plus 2 to the negative a half over negative a half from the original limits 2 to t. I didn't really do a u sub, so I don't need to change the limits. Uh, let's go analyze that. So we've got negative 2, and then that's a radical in the denominator. Let's go put in the limits of integration. So we got negative 2 over the square root of t plus 3 minus a negative 2 over in the bottom, 2 plus 3 is 5. So it looks like if I put infinity, for t goes to infinity, remember this ends up getting big, so negative 2 divided by big approaches 0, which means this piece will just go away and go to 0, and all I have left is negative and negative positive over 2 root 5. So this actually goes to a finite number, and therefore this integral is convergent. Okay, let's look at the next example. This seems to be that type C that I was talking about, where you have negative infinity and positive infinity. So we'll have to sort of break this up into two integrals um, to make it like a type A and a type B that we talked about earlier. Let's just go take a look at the graph of this thing and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're looking at the graph of the sky from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at the graph and see what it looks like. Uh, it's really tiny somewhere there on the origin, so let's go zoom in. Zoom in two. And let's push enter since it's near the origin. And it looks like I have an odd function. And going off to infinity, it seems to be really close to the x-axis. So maybe there's hope that it's decreasing and reaching a finite number. And going off to negative infinity, same idea. And it also looks like it's an odd function and gives us the feel that maybe things will even out and it'll end up being zero. So that's what we suspect. But to be sure, we're going to go look at the... Um, limit analysis and see what happens. So I'm just going to choose to break this guy up um, right smack in the middle at zero. I don't have to do this. You could pick any number in between you want, but analyzing things at zero with limit analysis might make it easier. So I'm just going to break it up and, and make it between negative infinity to zero and zero to positive infinity and then analyze each of these integrals. So again, I repeat, I just picked zero in between this interval. You could pick any number you want. Okay, so let's look at the left half. Replace the negative infinity with t, and let's not forget it says t goes to negative infinity, and analyze this integral. It looks like, um, gives you almost a feel like it's by parts because it's a polynomial and an exponential. However, um, a u sub is probably going to be nice because if I let u be this x to the fourth business, then my du will be 4x cubed and pick up this x cubed. So let's do a u sub. So let u be the exponential's exponent and du is negative 4x cubed dx, which will nicely pick up this piece and this piece of my integral. 
So I'm going to go ahead and analyze the integral and save this limit piece until I have things cleaned up and then put the limit there. So I got my e to the u and my du over 4, or negative 4. Let's change our limits of integration. You don't have to. You can bring them back at the end, but I'll go ahead and change it. The bottom limit, um, if u is negative x to the fourth and x happen to be t, if I put t in here, I get negative t to the fourth for the bottom limit. And for the top limit, if x was 0 and I put 0 for x, I get u equals 0, I guess. So I got negative a fourth, negative t to the fourth to 0, e to the u, du. Um, I kind of don't like the negative t to the fourth on the bottom and the zero to the top, so I'll just switch them. Again, I don't have to, but I'll put the zero in the bottom and the t to the fourth or negative t to the fourth for my top limit. So that's just by choice. And now, let me bring in the limit as well. I am to analyze this thing, which shouldn't be so bad, because e to the u just goes to e to the u. And since I already chose to change my limits of integration, I don't have to go back to x's. So let's just analyze that from 0 to negative t to the 4th. So I got the limit as t goes to negative infinity of this guy. I put in the negative t to the 4th and e to the 0. This guy we already know is just 1. And this sometimes causes confusion. So let's make sure we focus on this piece. I have e to the negative, And that's a t to the 4th. So if I put a negative infinity or something approaching negative infinity and raise it to the fourth. Remember, because I'm inputting something really, really small, in other words, going to negative infinity for the exponent here, well, that's going to be raised to the fourth and give me e to the negative, I guess, negative infinity to the fourth. You can say it's just something big. So I'll say it's just infinity, this part. And then I have negative exponents. They create reciprocals. So I'm really looking at 1 over e to the infinity because it's e to the negative some number, in this case, negative infinity. Um, so 1 over e to the big is going to go to 0 eventually, which means this piece is going to knock out and go to 0. So I got e to the 0, which is 1, and I had a fourth out in the front. So I guess 1 fourth times negative 1 is negative 1 fourth. So this piece, this piece of the integral actually gives me a finite answer, which means I should really keep going and analyze the other piece. If I had gotten a divergent for this piece of the integral, I would have stopped. I would not have gone and even bothered looking at the second piece. So if the first piece gave you a convergent, go on and look at the second piece. If it gives you a divergent, that's it, you're done, it's divergent, don't even look at the second piece. So this gives us motivation to move on and look at the other side also, or the other piece. And it'll be very comparable to this, so I'll go through it quickly. So same business, replace the infinity with a t, limit as t goes to infinity. And I have my integrand, then I'm just going to do a u sub like I did over here. And I have e to the u du from when, t, when x is 0, the u's are 0. And when x is t, then the u's end up being negative t to the fourth. So let's go ahead and evaluate this. e to the u just goes e to the u. I had a negative fourth out in the front from 0 to negative t to the fourth. I didn't really choose to switch the, uh, the limits of integration here because I have a 0 in the bottom and a t or something in terms of t on top. I'm fine with that. Um, here I just like 0 in the bottom better, so I changed the limits of integration. So we put the limits of integration in. As before, e to the 0 is 1. And we got e to the negative t to the fourth as t goes to infinity. So pretty much the same analysis applies here as we did before. You get e to the negative, you put something big and raise it to the fourth, it's even bigger. And then well, that's 1 over e to the infinity, which goes to 0. So this guy is gone. And I guess we end up with negative a fourth times negative 1, which gives us 1 fourth. So both pieces gave us finite values, but as we had suspected, when we add the two pieces, we end up with 0, a convergent integral, 
and when we looked at the graph initially, it seemed like it was an odd function, and both pieces would kind of cancel each other out.